What do you do when you start to miss somebody who is dead? Talk about them. Reminisce about the time spent with them. Allow myself to be sad that they're gone. My best friend died in 2015. I miss her a lot. Edit. Holy cheers, I did not expect to wake up to such a response to my comment. Thank you for the awards, the kind words about my loss, and additional words of support, advice, solidarity and shared loss. That last sentence is really important, emo. Allowing yourself to miss them and feel sad is definitely helpful for me. Edit to reply to some, there is no wrong way to grieve, provided you're not harming yourself or others. Feelings are the reason we exist, happiness, joy, exhilaration, love, all these things make life worth living. And sadness is part of that. Feeling sadness isn't being weak. It's just part of being alive. First I get sad. And that makes me wish I could have done things differently. And then I remember there are a lot of people in my life who are still alive, but won't be forever. So I check in with them, and try to do, and say the things I wish I had done, or said with those who died. Thanks for this. My dad died exactly 5 months ago, tomorrow. It's easy to get, caught up in all the things I wish I could have said to him, and done with him, since he was only 52. But it's a great reminder, to focus on all of the people who are still alive and all of the experiences and moments we will get to share together. Miss them. I watched my father die. I was there for his last moments and it's a memory forever ingrained in me those last moments. But when I think of that time which normally saddens me, I immediately think about all the good times we had. The valuable life advice I got from him. And that helps. Edit. First I want to thank you all for sharing your kind words and messages. Sharing your stories and the current phases you are in when it comes to losing someone close to you. There's no magical process or words I can offer any of you to make it better. I can only share from my own experience that it just took time and trying to always remember the good times. We both loved wrestling and football. We both loved conversations. We both loved some whiskey and a nice big steak together. Those and many more good memories I hold and cherish. Thank you as well for those of you kind enough to spend some of your hard earned money to award me as well. I will calculate the amount given and pledge to donate to a local charity. Same for me. My dad died recently and was at the hospital beside him for his last moments. I never understood what people meant by closure until that moment. I heard all the about families getting closure for their loved ones parting away and they were torn apart if they didn't. Knowing that he parred, seeing him par, and knowing that I was by his side definitely gave a bit comfort in a weird way. Edit. Thanks for sharing your stories everyone. I'm going through all of them. I know it's hard, but very cathartic to write about it slash talk about it, good and bad. It just helps to have someone listen. So please feel free to write and say as much as you want. My dad and I had an awesome relationship and we were very close. I know how much I lucked out to have a great father and am thankful of it every day. R slash Endless Thread did an amazing episode of their Adid centric podcast, Endless Thread, about dealing with loss, that was called Shipwrecked. In it the shared a post that often graces Reddit, that I have come to love in times of loss, as well as its backstory. Alright. Here goes. I'm old. And so what that means is I've survived so far, and a lot of people I've known and loved did not. I've lost friends, best friends, cowhawkers, acquaintances, grandparents, my mom, relatives, teachers, mentors, students, neighbors, and a host of other folks. But here's my two cents I wish you could say you get used to people dying. I never did. I don't want to. It tears a hole through me whenever somebody I love dies, no matter the circumstances. But I don't want it not to matter. I don't want it to become something that just pees. Man's voice reading same page fades in. My scars are a testament to the love and the relationships that I had for and with that person. And if the scar is deep, so was the love. So be it. Scars are a testament to life. Scars are a testament that I can love deeply and live deeply and be cut or even gouged. And that I can heal and continue to live and continue to love. And the scar tissue is stronger than the original flesh ever was. Scars are a testament to life. Scars are only ugly to people who can't see. As for grief, you'll find that it comes in waves. When the ship is first wrecked, you're drowning with wreckage all around you. 
Everything floating around you reminds you of the beauty and the magnificence of the ship that was and is no more. And all you can do is float. You find some piece of the wreckage and you hang on for a while. Maybe it's something physical. Maybe it's a happy memory or a photograph. Maybe it's a person who is also floating. For a while, all you can do is float. Stay alive. In the beginning, the waves are 100 hundred feet tall and they crash over you without mercy. They come 10 seconds apart and don't even give you time to catch your breath. All you can do is hang on and float. After a while, maybe weeks, maybe months, you'll find that the waves are still a hundred feet tall, but they come further apart, and when they come, they still crash all over you and wipe you out. But, in between, you can breathe and you can function. You never know what's going to trigger the grief. It might be a song or a picture, a street intersection, the smell of a cup of coffee. It can be just about anything, and the wave comes crashing. But in between the waves, there is life. Somewhere down the line, and it's different for everyone, you find that the waves are only 80 feet tall or 50 feet tall. And while they still come, they come further apart, and you can see them coming. An anniversary, a birthday, or Christmas, or landing at O'Hare International, you can see it coming for the most part and you prepare yourself. And when it washes over you, you know that somehow you will, again, come out the other side soaking wet sputtering, still hanging on to some tiny piece of wreckage, but you'll come out. Take it from an old guy, the waves never stop coming, and somehow you don't really want them to, but you learn that you'll survive them, and other waves will come, and you'll survive them too. If you're lucky you'll have lots of scars from lots of loves, and lots of shipwrecks. It goes on so beautifully. I strongly encourage you to listen to the episode, particularly the last part, where the poem is read live. It's worth it. Wubber. I have been looking for that post. Thank you. Miss them. Feel. Grieve. Cry. Know that the grief is the other side of love, expressing how much you value the deceased, and bringing them alive in you. Thank them. Talk about them. Talk to them. Learn more from your memories of them. Say their name. Gather with others to remember them. Wish them well, and invite them to move on. You also have the option to not arm they are gone. Conservation of energy is a fundamental law of nature. Continuation of consciousness can be verified throughout life. Sane societies don't arm beings are merely material. In fact, the material aspect is the least real, the most changeable and ephemeral. You can verify this for yourself. The average person eats between 35 and 55 tons of food in a lifetime. The body is constantly changing, changing, changing. But the witnessing awareness has always been there, stable, unaging. The I who saw the Grand Canyon at 7 years old and the I who experiences New York City at 65 are the same. That awareness has not aged, it is like an ageless mirror or movie screen upon which the whole story of life unfolds. Finally, you can use the energy of missing and the poignancy of your memory of the deceased to better wake up to and understand your own impermanence and certain death. You can take steps to live well and completely today, not arming that even another day will be guaranteed to you or your loved ones and prepare to die a good death rather than one avoided, rejected, feared as if it's a tragic surprise. Tomorrow is the first anniversary of my dad's funeral. I'm missing him pretty bad this week. Your post helped. Thank you. Cry. Simple and pure. It can help so much. I try to think of something else. I lost my twin sister six years ago to suicide. I never thought of life without her. We came into the world together I never thought we would leave together. It is unbearable. My heart goes out to you. I could only imagine how it is for twins with having a stronger connection and bond. I know it's hard and I wish I could say it gets easier. I wish you the best and if you ever need to talk I'm here for whatever it's worth. Hey op, I've written out this several times on reddit, on this account and old ones as well, but I'm going to write you out a new response, because, as you'll find as time pees, perspective on death changes over time. When I was 18, my best friend died my first week of college. The grieving process was further complicated, since I was unable to attend her funeral, I couldn't pay for my own flight ticket back home, and my parents deemed it unnecessary for me to fly back to attend. Then, two years later, my partner, who is, 
to this day, the only man I've ever truly loved, committed suicide. I know grief like the back of my hand. This is a familiar pain. It is an original pain. But it is not an eternal pain. For a long while after these losses, it felt like they colored my entire world. Every memory, past, and present, felt cloaked in incredibly sadness. My waking and dreaming life were completely consumed by mourning, and the transition was disorienting. The suddenness and permanence of death carries physical weight. It drains the world of color. It casts you into a sea of deep, thrashing waves, and you feel powerless to stay afloat above the black and pitch of it. Submerged in grief, in dreams, in the interstices between awake and dreaming where you realize at the outset of every new day that this is, in fact, real it levels you. It is no mistake that people who talk about grief liken it to a feeling of drowning, of becoming a husk of your former self, of being completely helpless to combat a loss that feels more like a piece of you has been bored out and taken away than it does something external. The fact is, we are undone by each other. We are undone by grief. We are undone by the person we lost and the pieces of ourselves they take with them when they go. Grief touches everything. It may feel like it has taken everything too. But it hasn't. It has only taken what was, not what is, not what will be. As your life grows, so too does the space around your grief. As the architect of our own lives and futures, it may take some time to start writing the chapters after. After all, grief immerses us in the before. But one day, you will have a moment in which you realize you are no longer in the water, in those hungry waves. You aren't consumed, you don't feel the weight. Maybe you're watching a movie with friends, or taking a bike ride, or working on art. Maybe it's a beautiful day and the sun shines down on you, and you think for the first time, this can be okay. Those moments are beacons that draw us out of the inner corridors inside of ourselves, back into the world of the living. They are brief new chapters we have written in the storybook of our survival, and they become longer and brighter over time. We start to build a life around grief, or rather, we build a life outside of it. The chapters we write become about the living, not just about the dead. They are a visions of our former selves. They are a roadmap to survival. As the chapters grow in length and size, so too does our ability to live without the punishing weight of grief. It becomes smaller. It feels more like a sea inside a landscape than the water you find yourself dragged by in every moment. We explore the terrain, and we find there are ways to mourn the dead, and call the living. Vivus Voco, Morchus Plango The truth is, the grief never leaves us. It has been 9 years, since my partner died, 11 since my best friend. On long bike rides, on rainy evenings sitting on my front stoop smoking, and on bridges, when I look over the edge, and see the water beneath me pulsing with the tide, I whisper little messages to them. I'm carrying you with me through this wide and wild world. I talk about them to my new friends, so that the people in my life know who they were and why they were important. I share pictures and stories. I'll let myself wade in the grief. Sometimes, I submerge myself in it, and I know that that too is okay. There is no roadmap for mourning, opus. It is a labyrinthine journey into ourselves, a story we continue to write through the passage of time and through distance from the original pain. There is no finishing, there is only revision. In a decade, you will look back and you will know what you have lost, but it will just be a shade of the things you know, feel, and have now. Let yourself feel this loss. Let yourself be swallowed by it. Know that this is okay. And know too, that you are also grieving the pieces of yourself, that were lost too. God seed, op. 3 edit, whole leeches. Thank you guys for all of the golds and other awards. There are so many awards now, what do they all mean? Am I really a timeless beauty as one award would imply, or am I hideously deformed? Backslash underscore, slash who can say. Since I'm making this edit anyway, I wanted to add something for those of you who wish to help someone else who is grieving. 1. Sentiment isn't always the best approach, please, don't resort to empty platitudes, especially not everything happens for a reason or this will make you our stronger types, as they can be insulting, patronizing, and unhelpful. My best advice is to contribute acts of service to those in mourning. Cook for them. Clean their house. Do their laundry. Babysit their kids. Take their dogs for a walk. The small things build up. The depression of grief hollows us out. 
The things I remember most from after these losses were the friends who swooped into my life and just made sure I was taken care of. Rides. Help with homework. A long drive with no destination and no forced conversation. One friend of mine took me out to the mountains, laid down a huge tarp, and lined up glab bottles and old VCR tapes for me to smash with a golf club and a baseball bat. Don't worry, we recycled the detritus afterwards by simply gathering up the tarp. What resources do you have that you can rally for this person? Use them. People in mourning receive a lot of platitudes and condolences, but often don't receive much real world help. Be the helper. Be a positive presence. Shoulder some of the burden so that they don't drown in more than just their grief. 2. Include the grieving person as often as possible. Invite them to parties. Invite them for solo hangs. Expect and be okay with hearing a lot of no's at first, but don't stop reaching out. Socialization is important during this period of time. It's not enough to just text, call, show up, give space if it's asked for, but don't give up. Involve them in activities. Do an art project together. Shower them with plants. Take a walk on a sunny day. Be okay with silence in conversation. Make it comfortable. Meet them where they are at. That is what good friends do. This is how you can help. 3 I ducking love you all. You are such kind people. Don't ever give up hope and never stop helping one another. My family is mostly dead. My friends are steadily overdosing, dying of cancer, completing suicide. I live in grief every day and always will. And your post is beautiful and true. I love it. Eventually we build a boat and pull ourselves out of the sea of grief, bit by bit, and one day we find that the same sea that nearly drowned us with its waves is now lifting our boat. Those times when the love that gives life to your grief inspires you to create or do good or be a better person, those times are the reason we hold on when the storm first comes. Because there is occasional sunshine the other side, if we can only find our way there. Plant a tree in their memory and watch it grow into something beautiful. This is a really great idea. I lost my best friend about 8 months ago. He was only 20, but he had gotten married like 6 months prior. His wife is obviously devastated, but we've been good support for each other. Anyways, they planted an avocado pit together before he died, just to see what would happen. It's gotten pretty big and is still growing. I'm really hoping it will be a big beautiful fruit bearing tree one day. It really sort of feels like a living part of him he left behind. I miss him every day, but it's things like this that make me feel like he's still around. Engage yourself in an activity or pastime that connects you with them. A Ouija board. If they died recently and they still have their phone number set up, call it. Listen to their voice email. I did this a lot after my best friend died when I was 17. There was something so comforting about picking up the phone to call her and hearing her bubbly voice saying hi, it's me, leave me a message, and knowing she was smiling the entire time she was recording it. If anyone is afraid of losing a loved one's voice email, this website will call their number, record the voice email message, and email you an mp3 of it absolutely free. Petakeen. Remember the good times. They wouldn't want you to feel down. Especially if you have other people to remember them with. Sharing memories about those that aren't with us anymore can be a beautiful experience. I've lost a number of people close to me. I will speak to them. I'm a committed atheist and believe that nothing remains after we die, but it helps anyway. If it's just a tickle of grief, I'll usually think something like, damn, X would have thought that was so cool. If it's a bigger, pressing grief, I'll talk to them out loud, or in my head. I wish you were here for this, or I learned this today, I thought you'd think it was neat or just duck, I miss you sees. I will speak to them, I do this as well, and while I wouldn't consider myself an atheist, I do not follow any particular religion. I find that talking to my friend, as if he is right behind my left shoulder takes away some of the grief. Also aids when I'm stressed over something and related to him. Side note, I don't let anyone in my actual life know I do this as I feel it might make them think that I've lost it. Also I'm totally aware that he is in fact dead. I usually listen music we listened with my late girlfriend. Sorry to hear about your girlfriend. 
I talked about Thea recently, but 5 years ago I lost my dog, Snoopy. He was my best friend for almost 17 years, so it was a very painful loss for me. One night shortly after he died I got drunk and decided I wanted a tattoo of a caricature of him to remember him by. I asked my room slash best human friend to draw it on my right forearm since I'm right handed and it was hard for me to do. Well, it was even harder to try and tattoo myself with my non-dominant hand and the result was a very sloppy tattoo. Even though it looks bad, it's my most cherished tattoo because it's such a raw expression of emotion. Whenever I miss him, I look down at that goofy face on my arm and remember all the happiness that he brought me and all the great memories we made together. It might not be something for everyone, but it never fails to put a smile on my face. Not gonna lie that is one of the cutest doggo tattoo I have ever seen in my life. There are a lot of different well designed tattoos but this, pure expressions. A man I knew for 13 years died in February of this year. He was a father to me and several of my friends who lived in our neighborhood. He was always kind and loved us all terribly. He was a mechanic for a long time and always showed me how to fix my car and helped me understand manuals and schematics. He even took me to get my permit the first and second BC I failed it. Time. I cried for days. I have been lucky in the sense that not many people who are close to me have died. But I felt this. Best advice I can give is to not bottle it up. If you need to cry, then cry. I had a shot of Jack for him and I lit a candle for him the night he part. Rest in peace Harvey. You were incredibly loved. We all miss you. I hope God welcomes you with open arms. Sounds like a good and wise man. May he rest in peace. My grandmother parted away 20 years ago. I still miss her at times. If you find an answer, let me know. If you speak to your family, ask for stories about her. My grandma parted away when I was 8, so I didn't get much time with her, but my mum and uncle talk about her and laugh at all the funny things she used to say and do. It keeps her memory alive in our family. I still have my dad's texts on his old number. When I miss him, I update my life through there to him. I know it's silly to be sending messages to a disconnected phone but it helps. When I'm really feeling down I still have an old voice email he left me on my birthday years ago where he sings to me and tells me how much he loves me and how proud he is of the man I have become. It's been 3 years since he part and it has become easier to deal with but it still hurts. Suppress those feelings till you explode in anger at someone else. Mood. Chaplin here. Honestly, just let yourself miss them. Instead of trying to distract yourself and force yourself to do something else, just let yourself feel it. If you need to cry, get mad, smile, laugh. Just find a place you can either be by yourself or with someone who knows how to just sit with you and let whatever be a feeling happen and then let it subside. Grief tends to come in waves and instead of trying to fight the current and not let it move you at all, it helps to give a little, let yourself grieve, miss them, and when the feelings subside a little bit, to keen a few more steps. There's no getting back to normal because the normal you knew can't ever be there again. You've got to learn the new normal and there's going to be some growing pains and residual pain from losing that person. Just let yourself be yourself and don't try and condemn any feelings you might think are bad i.e. anger, sadness, crying, etc. They're just sensations like pain, tickling, etc. They're telling your body something, in this case, that you're hurt. So let yourself be hurt and give yourself time to heal. Just be patient with yourself. I write them a letter. Trigger warnings, murder, violent content my mother was murdered when I was 16. It was quite difficult to find closure since she was shot with an AK-47 in the face while working in our small grocery store owned by a few past generations of my father's family. We lived in Mexico at the beginning of the drug war. My mother's face was disfigured to a point that it seemed fake. It had to be reconstructed with what seemed like wax. I was in shock for a few years. Possibly until 19 years old. I kept believing she had staged her murder so that we could run away. Obviously, I was mistaken. I even believed for a moment she had staged her death to run away with the lover. The mind in shock 
will come to irrational conclusions. I've been able to have some closure by writing her letters, when I miss her, when I need her, when things get difficult. I address unresolved issues and it truly helps heal the wound. It has been 11 years since the tragic incident. I would tell you, writing has truly helped me heal. I'm okay now. Sometimes I do need to get a bit of the pain and the weight off my chest, like this instance. I hope you find some closure, my friend. I'm glad to hear you are okay. Stay strong. God bless. Dad died in 2004, mom in 2017. I haven't stopped grieving for them yet. Mainly I cry, go visit their resting place, and talk to them. I talk to them sounds stupid, but I just talk to them about how much I miss them, and about my day it takes a while, and is definitely better done alone but it just gives you a chance to vent out without making anyone else have to burden your info. Doesn't sound stupid at all. Improve your aim. I can't laugh, because I'm in a room with people, saving the laughter for later. My dad died last summer. When I miss him, I think about all the good times we spent as a family, him getting to know his daughters-in-law, family dinners, childhood camping trips, fixing up the house together. Usually I cry a lot too, which is completely fine. I try not to think about how he died, accident while doing construction on my brother's house, on his retirement day, just remember the good times. It'll hurt, maybe forever, but he's still with me every day. Think how much she is bragging to God. My gran wanted nothing more than to see all her grandchildren go to uni. She died a few days before I started my application. Now we are waiting for my final grades to see if I got in. If I do, then it would mean only my little sister, who is too young to start applying, is the only one not to go, yet. I tend to wallow in it May is a rough month for me. My mom died 20 years ago as of May 23rd. Her birthday is May 4th. Mother's Day is in May. Constant reminders. But missing her is my reminder she was here. If it's bad enough, in talk with my best friend or my dad about her, memories we have. It helps. Like others have suggested I talk to them. I also include them in my daily thoughts about things or life. Lost my brother over a year ago, and I talk to him all the time. He still makes fun of me, picks on me, congratulated me, and helps me make decisions. I was at his house doing some work this past Christmas time. The house was built by my grandfather, who I never met. I knew my brother and father both would have an input in how I was doing the repair, but as I worked in that shop I spoke with three generations about how I was doing it, and how I knew it wasn't perfect, but the best I could do. My grandfather even stuck up for me. I guess my point is keep them in your life. This popped up first thing in my feed today. I had a close friend of mine par away in 2013 and today would have been his 27th birthday. Him taking this as a sign. The comments were helpful to read. I miss him a lot. I really needed this thread. Thank you for posting it. 3. It's okay I hope more people will find the answers they are looking for. Honestly, I just cry. Learn necromancy. I'm really ducking upset I had to scroll this far before someone mentioned beseech the dark powers to resurrect a lost loved one. I know this might sound silly to some, but my cat parted away February 12th, and I still don't know if I'm going to be okay. He was the best thing that ever happened to me. I adopted him when he was 4 or 5 and gave him a home for 13 years. We had so many good times and I have a million photos, but I can't escape the guilt for all of the things I did wrong when his health was failing. We were at the vet once a month, and I still couldn't keep him healthy. He started being scared of me from the constant medication, and it broke my heart because he was my little nugget and I loved him so much, and I just wanted to spend lots of time with him and keep him happy towards the end. I made the decision to end it at home with my favorite vet. It was a beautiful day to be honest. He was happy, and he left the earth eating tuna fish. I can't even think about him for a second without absolutely breaking down. Cat tax. I'm so sorry for your loss. For what it's worth, it's not silly, at least not to me. You love that little kitty to pieces. I don't think there is much I can say that will be of any use, but I hope you find peace or comfort in the happy memories with your friend. 
adjust my scope and aim better. Think about a funny moment and laugh. July 29th will be one year since my 16 year old son parted away. With his muscular dystrophy, I was his physical carriage either, lifting and moving him. Without him, my routine feels empty as this was something we did for 4 years. I miss him every single day. I still feel like I hear him calling me for help moving in bed. Sometimes I reminisce through tears of sadness and laughter. Sometimes I sob uncontrollably. Sometimes, usually driving home, I scream as long and as loud as I can because nothing else works. However, he had an amazingly strong faith for someone his age. I know where he is and I know I will see him again. And that brings me peace. Miss them. Laugh, cry, hide in bed, grieve however you need to. Everyone handles grief differently. There is no pressure. Just miss the person, grieve for as long as you need, and then pick up and move on. That doesn't mean you forget the person or what they meant to you. It just means you accept that they are gone and you can't change it. And also accept that while they're gone, you aren't and you still get more time to live. Someone I was really close to died close to a decade ago. Seems weird that it's been that long, and I still think about them a lot. But somewhere along the way I just decided that being sad every time I was reminded of them wasn't a great use of my time, and was also doing them quite the disservice as they were always happy and fun, and hated seeing other people sad. So I think of them and smile, knowing I had some great times with them. It's still a little sad, but it's happy too. And it gets easier as time goes on. I'll listen to songs that remind me of that person. It's a process and its time frame will differ with different people. Idle time to think and overthink is the worst way of trying to cope though at first it is the only thing you have energy to do. Being with others, having counseling and being busy are essential for future happiness. Some days will be better than others, but the good days will come more often as time goes by. I didn't think there was any possible way to be happy again, but I managed to get through to that side, but it took time. I still don't understand why my love was taken from me when it took so long to find, but I know my pain was nothing like the loss of a child which many go through. So I try to be so thankful for what I haven't had, and know many would trade places with me. I'm not cold or hungry, and I live in a free country. When I think of my many blessings, I know I should never complain for my blessings have far outweighed any sadness I have had to endure. I agree with talking about them. Keep them alive through your memory with them. It's funny this question comes up today. Today is my mother's birthday. If she was still alive, she would be 73. She parted in 1976 at the age of 29. I don't remember her at all but I miss her. It's weird to miss someone I never met, but I look at pictures, I wonder what she would be like. I keep her memory alive. I plant a flower in my yard. Do something to remember them by. And it's okay to miss a person, it's okay to grieve, because there's no time limit. They are always with you. Just remember and they are there. Pray for their soul. Dig them up. I often look at pictures of the deceased person. Something about it gives me peace. Like, you are not here anymore, but I still have these photographs, and if I try hard enough I can still picture you in front of me, I can still smell you, and still feel your arms around me. Pictures are a way to go back to a certain time and place. Drink. Join them. Join them. Embrace the feeling. Acknowledge it's there. Grieve. Realize that while this wave is huge right now, it will not be as big the next time and each time after that. Accept what is. Continue until next time. I miss my dad a bunch. When I really start thinking about him, it'll do what he used to do. Go to the store he went to daily, pick up a 12er of Bud Light, a $20 scratch off lottery ticket, go to the house that I grew up in, he grew up in, and his parents built, drink a beer. Scratch the ticket, and talk out loud about what I would do, if I hit it big on the scratcher. Masturbate. My girlfriend killed herself a couple of years ago. It didn't set in, until I really wanted to kiss her that it never ever gets to again. And that's when I started to mourn really hard. Now I think about her at night in a perfect moment. One where she's happy and beautiful and laughing, right before we lock eyes. 
I'll let myself feel really sad about her. It hurts and then it feels better. Man. She was cool. I might be alone here, but I believe that whenever a departed loved one jumps into your mind and you can't think of anything else, that's them visiting you, wanting to chat about the good old days. You gotta just let it happen. That's lovely. Talk to them. Cry. Pray for them. An author slash neuroscientist named David Eagleman once wrote, There are three deaths, the first is when the body ceases to function. The second is, when the body is consigned to the grave. The third is that moment, sometime in the future, when your name is spoken for the last time. By keeping our lost loved ones names alive we keep a piece of them alive with us until our time comes. This thought has brought me some comfort in the past, and I'm hoping it can do the same for you. Hug my dog and cry, while she looks at me like WTF is wrong with you? This is probably going to ruffle some feathers, but it's not meant to be mean spirited. I personally remind myself that they're dead. They aren't coming back. Again, not in a rude way, but in an accepting way. Remember the good times, and then move on with life. It's okay to remember them. It's good to remember them. Some people will tell you it's okay to grieve, and cry and mourn. If that's your thing, sure. But don't let it last very long, or it will drag you down. If you have to, cry for a bit, then force a smile, don't forget them, and move on. I was raised in a military home and though this isn't indicative of every military family, it was never really practical to mourn. If you've got chis you gotta do, and it hits at a bad time, block it, do what needs to be done as far as priorities, then mourn in private. Again, this is a me slash my family thing, so it may not be suitable for you. But yay, the main thing is that, if you're going to be sad about it, that's fine, but don't linger in sadness, and don't let yourself use substances to heal, that isn't healing, it's running. That's a whole other bow game. Good luck, my reddit friend, and stay positive. Thank you for posting this. My mom died a week and a half ago, and I'm struggling. Dad died a month ago. I'm 17 and this chis sucks. Keep your head up and continue to make them proud. I lost my 2 month old infant about 5 years ago due to CHD, congenital heart disease. He never made it home from the hospital. I was in his room when he coded, stood there as about 50 people crammed in his room to run the code and open his chest and ultimately walked up to him because I knew enough time had passed and he wasn't going to be brought back. I barely cried then, and don't cry now. I sat through his memorial service in a daze. I wonder if I have PTSD and maybe that's why. I walked out of the hospital that day and everything looked and felt so different. In hindsight, I think it was because my hope for him was gone. Sometimes the memories and grief will hit like a ton of bricks, and I'll think, holy chis, I can't believe this is a life, but then I remind myself that it was him that suffered the most. I look at pictures and watch the few videos we have of him. I'll listen to music that reminds me of him. I think of everything I wish I would have done differently. And then I give my other kids some extra love. Losing a child is hard. My friend was murdered last night and someone sent me this thread. Thanks to everyone who has contributed. It's been a rough few hours since I found out. Adjust your sights. They shouldn't be that hard to hit if they are dead. Necromancy. My grandfather would tell all these jokes at family gatherings. Whenever I miss him, I tell his favorite joke. A man is sitting at home when he hears a knock on the door. He goes to see who it is and only finds a snail. He picks it up and throws it across the yard. A year later he hears another knock and opens the door to find the same snail. The snail looks at him and says what the hell was that for? His joke got a giggle from me. Colon close bracket. This poem helps me a lot. Do not stand at my grave and weep. I'm not there. I do not sleep. I'm a thousand winds that blow. I'm the diamond glints on snow. I'm the sun on ripened grain. I'm the gentle autumn rain. When you awaken in the morning's hush I'm the swift uplifting rush of quiet birds in circled flight. I'm the soft stars that shine at night. Do not stand at my grave and cry. I'm not there. I did not die source family friend poems. I talk to her. I have a cry inside. Treasure my memories of her. 1. Try not to cry. 
to cry a lot. I lost my mother when I was 1. Didn't knew she committed suicide till I was 21 years old. My sister has been everything to me since then. Whenever I miss my mother, I'd call my sister and talk to her. There is a ton of great advice here, but I want to share something that was helpful to me. Sometimes I can indulge in my grief. Like pushing on a bruise or picking a scab, I can run over upsetting thoughts intentionally. There is something about the chest wrenching hurt that can be cathartic and satisfyingly intense. At its best, I'm processing something sad, but at its worst I'm using something sad to avoid something difficult. I'm not making this accusation against anyone else, and it's a very nuanced thing, especially when the something difficult is made more difficult by the something sad. I just try to recognize why I'm feeling something, and it helps me plot a course for myself. If the grief feels necessary, I give myself space to grieve, but I limit it. If it feels indulgent, I try to understand why I'm indulging. Mental health is a difficult chore. My nana died a few months ago. I miss her every day, but when it gets super bad I will listen to the old soundtrack of Journey to the West, a movie we would watch together religiously, or I would talk to her in my head. I once thought it was stupid and told her so, and kept asking if she could hear me. That night I had a dream that I was back at my aunt's house and my phone rang. When I picked up it was Nana. I started crying and asked if she could hear me or remembered me. She said she could and she does. She also said to always talk to her when I miss her and she will always hear me. My mom keeps her grandma's wedding ring and almost every night she lights a candle, puts her ring next to it and leaves the candle to brun out. I lost my 15 years old son to suicide almost 2 years ago. The grief is like an elephant sitting on my chest. I still haven't figured out what to do about it. Most of the time I smile at the memory. It gets easier the longer time peace trust me. I just posted recently about a favorite memory of my granddad and his sometimes pet cat. Don't stop thinking about them and missing them. It's what keeps their legacy alive. Luckily for me, my brother recorded his video games and put them on YouTube so I can go back and watch them haha. <laughs> I also every once in a while go on his Steam account and just write him an update on how my life is going. My feelings are conflicted on religion, but I like believe if there is or an afterlife that he is able to read them. You dig up their body. Can this count for pets too? One of dogs died at the end of November last year, and I still keep expecting him to bounce out to the door when I get home. I miss him a lot. I go through my pictures of them and let myself cry. Losing someone close is hard and sometimes you just need to let your emotions out. My twin brother died about six and one half years ago, and it's really hard. Sometimes I just let it out by doing the last thing we did together and cry. I try to make him proud of me for getting my life together, and I know I'll never forget him, and wherever he is right now I want him to see his sister remembering him, but living her life. It took me a long time to get to this place of peace and acceptance, and if you're not there yet it's okay, grieving is a process. My little sister died in 2012 at 3 years old. Even if I don't really remember the time that she was with us, because I was little too, 8 years old when she died, I still know that she was very smart and special. I imagine her being a little angel in the haven knowing that she is in a much better and peaceful place. My wife died of cancer 12 years ago. I don't know about anyone else, but when I miss her I listen to sad songs and cry really hard. Seems to help for a time. My 19 year old son passed away suddenly 2 months ago. We still don't know what happened. I miss him every moment. When I wake up for a few minutes I forget, then I remember, and the dark deep empty ache opens up again. I miss him so much. Think of the good times you had with them. Cherish them and share similar moments with friends or family who are alive. My mom died almost 2 years ago. Some days are better than others, but sometimes it hurts so bad I can't stand it. I'm not religious, but sometimes I talk to her as if she's watching over me. I tell her how much I miss her and how much I appreciate her and how sorry I'm for not being the best kid I could've been. I've got major survivor's guilt, so it helps with that. 
I also found that talking about her and reliving memories slash unlocking old memories of her helps. If I don't forget her, it's like she's still here. It's okay to be sad. It's okay feel guilty that you're alive and they're not. It's okay to feel angry at them or the reason they're gone. It's not okay not feel like you can't tell anyone. Oh my. You watched until the end? That's ducking awesome dude. Thanks for watching.